and today we're making apple juice brine pulled pork. So we'll start by taking a picnic shoulder, brining it in apple juice overnight, then we're going to inject it with some apple juice, and then we're going to put it on the smoker, and it's going to take 8, 9, 10 hours, so most of the day. I've got five cups of water in here. I'm going to add 10 cups of apple juice, right? There was four there. Okay, just got to pour out some more. There's eight. Look at that. Ten. Perfect. Okay. What I've got over here is a cup of brown sugar, a cup of kosher salt, two teaspoons of minced garlic, two teaspoons of peppercorns. Okay. We're going to get this in here. All right. I'm just going to stir this up real good so it gets dissolved. Okay, we're looking pretty good there. All right, here we've got a picnic shoulder. I've just scored the back uh, with a knife, made a diamond pattern. The only reason I did that was to help the marinade get down in it more. It has been rinsed off. Now we're going to slip this guy, whoa, down in here. That's about as close as fit as you can get without having a catastrophe, okay? So what I will do here is we'll just skim just a little off, okay? I don't want to spill this going in the house. And then I'm going to put the lid on it. Okay, that should be sufficient so I don't make a ginormous mess. We're going to get the lid on it. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. I'm going to make sure it's good and covered. There we go. And we're going to let it marinate overnight. And we'll pick this video back up tomorrow. This, um... Pork shoulder has been brining all night in the fridge. Okay, see if I can do this without making a ginormous mess. Okay, now it's a really thick cut of meat, so to be honest with you, I'm not too worried about there being any excess salt on the outside. But you know, I'm kind of in the habit of wiping it down anyway. No, no need to rinse it under the sink. You know, just in case there's some hunks of salt crystal, but you know, it's so thick, you're not going to have to worry about that for this particular cook. So if you don't want to take the time to dry it off, then don't do that. Now for my rub today, I'm going to use this uh, pork candy maple sugar bourbon. If you don't have this one, that's okay. You know, pick out your favorite uh, rub. I do like to use a rub that's a little bit sweet. And yep, you could use a binder if you wanted here, uh, but again, I don't really think that's going to be an issue. Um, the outside of this fat cat we're going to get rid of anyway uh, when we make the pork, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just trying to get it down in here in these little grooves that we cut, um, just to give us a little bit of flavor there. So what we're going to do here, this is where I'm more worried about getting the rub. You can see it's going to stick pretty good without a binder, but again, you can use a binder, Worcestershire Shire, or mustard, or even oil, some um, Sang's oil, vegetable oil, anything like that will work. This just really isn't that difficult. Okay. Now, um, if I were doing this again, because I just realized on the video I forgot something, we are going to inject this guy, and ordinarily I would inject it before putting the seasoning on it, but we'll just make do. We're going to inject it with this same brine that we let it sit in overnight. And again, ordinarily I would inject it before seasoning it, but you know, sometimes I get to making these videos and talking and lose track of where I'm at. So what I'm going to do is inject this pork about every inch and a half, two inches with this brine. And you know, for all you like to comment on the cross-contamination issues, right, everything is still raw, so you don't have to worry about that. There's no issue here. But because it's so thick, it's going to take on some brine, or I'm going to take on some injection, whatever you want to call it. Now you'll know this guy is injected enough. When you start, I don't know if you can see it from the video, but in certain places when I inject it, it's starting to run out other places. Then you know you've got enough in it. I'm just going to put one more in here. But it's coming out here. I think we're good to go. Now, I will, you know, because like I said, I, I seasoned it before I injected it, which, you know, just a mistake. I'm just going to touch it back up. 
Okay. And um, what I am going to do today is try to drive a hook or two in this guy, and we'll try hanging it from this uh, pit barrel today. For the wood today, I'm going to use a little persimmon. I'm going to spread around this guy. Okay. As you can see, I do have a couple of hooks in here. I don't want this guy falling off. I've never hung one in here before. Then uh, I'm going to hang it in here like so. Get the lid on it. Check on it in one hour. All right, while this pork is cooking, let me tell you how you can win something. I've got this pork candy rub that we used, or I've got this I Like Pig Butts barbecue sauce. You want to win one of these? Let me tell you how to do it. You leave a comment down below, right? Tell me about the recipe. You, hey, you can critique it. Tell me something you'd like to see us do. Leave a comment below. You'll be entered for a random drawing to win either one of these that you choose. To make this law, we've got a half a cup of mayo and a half a cup of sour cream, a teaspoon of sugar. I bought this pre-shredded coleslaw, right? You can make it all up from scratch if you want to buy the cabbage and the carrot and all those goodies. Got a quarter cup of red onion, all right? And the last thing I'm going to do is add in, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. There's one, and there's two. Now, if I was making this just for me, I would add in some chopped jalapeno also. But my son, I'm making this pulled pork for him today, and he doesn't like jalapeno. Now, we found this recipe on the Traeger website, so, um, you know, I need to tell you that. I didn't come up with this all by myself. Okay, so I'm just going to get this mixed up, and this is the slaw we're going to use for that pulled pork. I'm going to put a piece of saran wrap over this as soon as I get it mixed up real good. I'm going to get it in the fridge until that uh, picnic shoulder is ready. So we're two hours, 15 minutes. I just wanted to show you this pit barrel today is running around 295 degrees. So if you're using a master build or a different kind of smoker, uh, that'll let you know what temperature we're at. And the internal temp of our uh, pork shoulder right now is 105 degrees. Okay. I just want to show you what it looks like. It's got some absolutely beautiful color coming on. Hopefully you guys can see that. Really looking nice. We're going to let it keep going. It gets up, like I say, around 160. It's been four hours. We're at 150 degrees internal temperature. Let me show you the color of this guy. The color is about where I want it. I'm going to go, let me pull this probe out. Now, I just don't want that outside to get too dark. Get to grab both of these hooks, maybe. Maybe not. Okay, let me just show you. See the color on the guy? I hope you can see that. It's beautiful. Okay. So I'm just going to move it over here. I've got a foil pan. All right. Okay. And we obviously don't need the hooks anymore. I'm just going to take these hooks out. Like I say, four hours, 150 degrees. Okay. I'm just going to pour, I've got a cup of apple juice in the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to wrap this guy in foil. Okay. We're just going to tear off a piece of foil here. Put this guy up. And in the interest of full disclosure, I had to change pans. The other pan was too big, so I had to swap that pan out for a little bit smaller pan, just in case you're wondering. Then we're going to get our um, thermometer back in this guy, because we're going to cook it on up over 200 today. Okay? Let's get the lid back on it. She's going to get this other rod in it. Like I say, we're going to keep on cooking. It's going to be a few more hours. We're at 8 hours, 45 minutes. You can see the this is the temperature of our pork shoulder, 202. The pit barrel is at 277. 202 is probably about done. I'm going to poke it and we're going to see. I'm just going to stick it in here a couple times. I'm telling you, it feels pretty, pretty smooth. Pretty no friction. Like 202 is about where we want it. You could take it up another two degrees if that's what you prefer. It's going to be dark out here before long. So I'm going to take it off. We're going to have a look.
All right, so we'll take this off, see what it looks like. We'll see what it looks like together because I have not taken the foil off. Just shy of nine hours. Oh, look at that color. Oh, yeah. All right, you can see the steam. I'm just going to let it cool down a little bit. It's entirely too hot to touch. I'm just going to take this foil, kind of drape it over it so nothing gets on it. We're just going to let it sit here for about 10 minutes. Then we're going to get into what we've been waiting for all day. Now you can pull this right in this pan if you want. I'm going to take it out for the video so you can see what it looks like. Oh, it's falling apart. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is going to be awesome. Do not throw this juice away. Okay. We'll put that bad boy there. Look at that bone. Look. Now, you know, it's a pygmy shoulder, so the bone comes in bigger than that. We'll get to that in a minute. It's just kind of, look, look, oh my gosh, it's just going to fall apart. Look at this. Oh yeah, look at this. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Okay. Look at the bark on it. Look at it. You got the nice pink smoke ring around this guy. See it here? See the smoke ring? Oh, I'm telling you, this. I can't wait. I'm sorry. I'm like a kid in a candy store, aren't I? Okay, what I'm going to do is just pull up enough here. We'll make a sandwich out of it. We're going to give it a try. Look how this falls apart with that slaw we made. I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. It is still plenty, plenty hot. Beautiful bark. So I got a semi-toasted bun here. We're not going to pull this whole thing. I wanted to give it a try. Look at that. It's got beautiful bark. I can't get over it. But hey, proof is in the pudding, right? Let's wait and see what it tastes like, okay? So there we got some of this beautiful pulled pork, all right? Now, you notice I have a sauce dish yet, right? Just gonna take some of that awesome juice, right? You could just pull this whole pork, put it in a pot and put that juice on it if you want it. But I wanna do a little bit more. We're gonna take out some of this I like pig butts. And I cannot lie, barbecue sauce. All right, but the pig butts barbecue sauce. All right, I like to do the barbecue sauce on the side. That way, everybody can put the barbecue sauce on they like. Look at that color of that. Will you look at that? Now let's get that slaw. Now there's some of that slaw we made, huh? How about that? Come on now. Tell me that don't look good. All right, so we've got our sandwich here. We got that. I like pig butts barbecue sauce on it. Pulled pork. That awesome coleslaw we made. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. I'm sorry. This is I went to the best barbecue restaurant you could find. Pull apart. I'm telling you, it's awesome. Sorry. You get the sweetness from that apple juice. Was it worth brining it? it? It it definitely was. You know the pit barrel does a great job on smoking food. You know you need to keep an eye on it. It's got a nice smoky flavor from that persimmon wood. You know kind of a sweet light wood smoke. You know coleslaw. You know coleslaw just sets off pulled pork at least in my opinion. Hey, this barbecue sauce we use on it's pretty awesome too. Mmm. Juicy, sweet. Falls apart in your mouth. Mmm. If you're gonna make pulled pork, I would definitely recommend trying this apple juice brine and injected. Moist, sweet, it's got that nice little, it does have a faint apple juice flavor in it. It's not overwhelming at all, don't worry about that. It's delicious. Thanks for watching another one of our videos. If you got any questions or comments about this video, I hope you just leave them down here in the comment box. I think it's called a comment box. A lot of times I say description box, but it's comment box. If you're not a subscriber already, I hope you hit that armadillo pepper icon, hit that bell. You'll see all our recipes you can see. We don't do anything fancy. We just try to kick up your backyard barbecue game.